The Phoenix Single Outrigger is a durable and versatile component used with a custom fit low temperature thermoplastic splint for dynamic splinting of individual digits. This outrigger can be used in a variety of splint designs. This videotape will demonstrate just one, an ulnar gutter wrist splint with dynamic flexion assist for the little finger MP joint. The wheel acts as a pulley, redirecting the angle of dynamic force in a low profile splint. One inch of lateral adjustment aligns the splint force with appropriate radial or ulnar pull. Three-fourths inch rotation simplifies maintaining the dynamic tension at 90 degrees. Dynamic force can be achieved by rubber bands, graded elastics, or springs of varied resistance. This videotape will demonstrate methods for fabricating a dynamic flexion splint using the Phoenix Single Outrigger. Further reading about basic principles in using dynamic splints is recommended. The following are helpful references on the subject. The single outrigger package includes five wire supports with adjustable wheels, hex wrench, finger loops, and five thumb nuts which serve as rubber band posts. Additional supplies needed but not included are tube stockinette, thermoplastic, and strap materials. Adhesive back foam padding is used over the distal ulna. Paper, tape measure, and wax pencil are used in making the splint pattern. Also needed is the dynamic component of choice, rubber band, graded elastic, or spring. If a spring is used, a spring holder will be needed. Additional thumb nuts or rivets may be needed if these are used to attach the outrigger. Tools and equipment needed are a heat source for simmering water and a net for lifting the thermoplastic, heat gun, scissors, and a punch or drill. First, a pattern for the ulnar gutter splint is made, following the thenar and flexion creases so that motion of the digits is not restricted. At the dorsum of the hand, the splint will extend from just proximal to the MP joints to cover approximately two-thirds of the forearm. The traced pattern is cut out. Then the paper is placed on the forearm to check the fit. The pattern will be traced onto the thermoplastic using a wax pencil. The thermoplastic is softened by heating for a brief time and the pattern is cut out. The hand is covered with tube stock and net and adhesive back foam is placed over the distal ulna. The thermoplastic is reheated, dried, then draped over the ulnar border of the hand and forearm. Care is taken to roll the edge proximal to the distal flexion crease and to clear the thenar crease. The splint is gently held to conform to the distal transverse arch of the hand. As the thermoplastic cools, adhesive back Velcro is attached and Velcro straps are added. Soft strap material is used for comfort. This is particularly important at the thumb web space and over the radial aspect of the wrist. The location of the outrigger is then determined. A pre-tied finger sling is placed over the proximal phalanx of the little finger. Note that the lines are at a right angle to the proximal phalanx. Notice also that the lines cross the scaphoid. Flexion forces applied at the MP must accommodate the normal oblique angle of flexion. The location of the outrigger is marked. When marking is completed, the splint is removed. The adhesive back foam is moved from the stockinette to the inside of the splint. There are two methods to attach the outrigger to the thermoplastic, by thumb nuts or by bonding another layer of thermoplastic over the base. If thumb nuts are to be used,